Well, praise the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Neil Ferguson, and on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Beverly D. Frazier, and the Morning Star Church, we want to welcome you to another segment of worship with the proper understanding. We're going to go back to um, the previous passage from before in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 through 30. The posture of worship, part two. The posture of worship, part two. It reads, here begins the reading of God's holy word. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. So far, the scriptures our most heavenly and holy father we thank you lord for your goodness we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your grace we thank you for your loving kindness towards us we thank you 
and we stand in your house of worship to proclaim that you are Lord and beside thee there is no other we thank you Lord for another opportunity to come again to come around your word we ask and pray that you would bless this simple witness charge it with your power grace presence and anointing Lord I ask and pray that you would touch my lips touch this young and brutish mind bring illumination in the name of the Lord Jesus that Lord at the end of this exercise we have a proper understanding of who you are what you are show us the importance of worship and praise do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to think or ask of thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth make this an alarm both for the sinner as well as the saints we pray in Jesus name we pray amen and amen when we continue on in verse 20 the last time on the previous part in the posture of worship we left off with Jehoshaphat the nation of Judah and Jerusalem worshiping the Lord and worshiping the Lord because they had received the word from the Lord a prophetic word from the Lord from one from one of the Levites that prophesied Jehaziel the son of Zechariah the son of Benaiah the son of Jael the son of Mataniah a Levite of the sons of Aphah and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him with a prophetic word to tell the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the King Jehoshaphat who assembled the people together in prayer and fasting because they were going to be invaded by nations that surrounded them the children of Moab the children of Ammon and the inhabitants of Mount Seir which were commonly known as the Edomites nation neighboring nations but yet they had a common ancestry these were cousins these were their brothers um, distant relatives and God was telling them be not afraid I know these nations are coming to invade your land but be not afraid I know I gave you commandments in Deuteronomy not to mess with the Edomites nor the Moabites or the Ammonites I know you're not bothering them and now they're coming to bother you but the word of the Lord was be not afraid nor don't be dismayed do not be intimidated or fall apart because of the multitude of these nations because this battle is not yours it is the Lord's hallelujah and it's good to know you don't have to fight every battle some battles the Lord is going to take care of himself so we learn that sometimes we have to ask the Lord Lord you take on this battle for me and then God gives them not only a promise but he gives them instructions 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 he says tomorrow go down against them they come up by the cliff of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel and God re and re repeats this to the nation of Judah and to King Jehoshaphat you don't have to fight you won't have to use any cattle poles, any bows, any spears, any slingshots. This one is on me. All God asked them to do was set yourself and stand still. And that's just a reminder. Sometimes you don't have to fight when God is fighting for you. When God is fighting for you, 
And when God takes on your battles, all you need to do is stand still and set yourselves. And the, when God fights for you, all you need to do is see the salvation of the Lord, the provision of the Lord. Watch how God comes through for you. And he says, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. So not only is God fighting for us, or not only can God fight for you, but he's also concerned about your emotional state. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And after they heard the word of the Lord from, from Jehaziel, when you received the promise, they began to worship the Lord. Before the fight comes, worship the Lord. The multitudes are coming against you, but worship the Lord. And the Levites, the spiritual leaders of the house of the Lord and of the land, led the people in worship by praising the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. So yet, they were worshiping the Lord in spite of the crisis. They were worshiping the Lord in spite of the national crisis. In spite of the, the forces of invasion, they were worshiping the Lord. And sometimes when trouble is coming your way, just as a friendly reminder, remember this posture. We must bow down and worship the Lord. And in verse 20, they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness. And sometimes the wilderness can be an unfamiliar place. The wilderness is where there may be little to no water. The wilderness is where there are beasts of the field and animals that can threaten your life and well-being. But yet, these people of Judah, the people of praise, they went into the wilderness because God gave them the instructions to. And also because the Lord promised them, I'm going to be with you. And I'm here to let you know, whatever your environment may be, no matter what your circumstances may be, when the Lord is with you, you can face the wilderness. You can Deal with the wilderness experience, whether you're familiar with it or not. When the Lord is with you, you can face your wilderness experience. And I'm here to let you know that this has been a year of wilderness experiences. Going into places, experiencing things that you may have never thought that you would face or experience in your lifetime but I'm here to let you know stay close to the Lord because when the Lord is with you you can face the wilderness experience the unfamiliar territories and places of life take the Lord with you and they went into the wilderness the wilderness the wilderness and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said he says hear me O Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the city of peace Jehoshaphat is encouraging them now and saying believe in Jehovah your Elohim believe in the Lord your God believe in the self-existent one that is contained believe in the eternal one the one that had no beginning and the one that has no ending all that he needs is in himself believe in Jehovah your creator the God who takes nothing and makes something now this is very important the covenant maker and the covenant keeper your God and be established believe as prophets so shall ye prosper and verse 22 Jehoshaphat being a king being a leader did something very unusual in verse 21 
he consulted with the people and appointed singers. People who could create music with their bodies. Singers unto the Lord. So he was continuing the worship experience away from the house of the Lord. Because a few verses before, you see that the Levites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. That's at the house of the Lord. That's in the city of Jerusalem. But notice what Jehoshaphat, the good king, said. He consulted with the people and got singers not to sing at the temple. Not to sing during their sessions of prayer and fasting. But he appointed singers to sing in the wilderness. So notice, one of the postures is to sing unto not just any song, not just a song to get by, not just a song for entertainment, but Jehoshaphat appointed singers to sing to the Lord. So even in your difficulties and trying times, even in your wilderness experiences, and don't know what the outcome may be in life sometimes, sing to the Lord. And it also says in verse 21, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. The beauty of their God. The beauty of how great he is to sing how different he is to sing that he's different from their trials to sing that he's different than their circumstances that he's different than their tribulations that they're different than the invasions that they're different from Moab and Ammon and the Edomites and the inhabitants of Seir letting singing unto who and what God is getting caught up with the character of God. And notice, he appointed the singers to sing in the wilderness experience. And I'm here to friendly remind you, one of the postures of worship, one of the postures of praise is to sing a song unto the Lord. Not only to sing, but the posture of worship was put the singers before the army. My goodness. The singers don't have a sword that we know of, not a shield, not a spear, not a bow and arrow. That's what the army's for. But yet they were put in front of the army. That's an unusual strategy. But Jehoshaphat appointed singers in front of the army. And I'm here and it reminds me when I look at the passage of scripture. When you sing praises unto the Lord. When you worship the Lord. In the beauty of holiness, you're not defenseless. You may not see the singers armed, but they're not defenseless. And I'm here to let you know, be encouraged to sing unto the Lord in your wilderness experiences. You don't sing unto the Lord when everything is going well. You sing unto the Lord when things are working against you. And if God has given you a promise, you should sing. 
When God gives you a promise that he's with you, you should sing. When God gives you a tomorrow, you should sing. When God gives you the promise, this is my fight and I'm fighting for you, you should sing a song unto the Lord. Sing about who he is and what he is. Verse 21. We're not just going to say anything. But we're going to sing one of the songs that we were instructed to sing during the days of David and Solomon. And it's safe to suggest that it was around. And they said, praise the Lord for his mercies endureth forever. My goodness. Praise the Lord for he is good. For his mercies endureth forever. Praise the Lord for he is good. For his mercies endureth forever. Praise the Lord for he is good. For his mercies endureth forever. And as they're singing this, for his mercies endureth forever. Praise the Lord for his mercies endureth forever. To the Lord for his mercies endureth forever. Praise the Lord for his mercies endureth forever. And as the choir began to sing this over and over again in front of the, in front of the army, the Bible says as a consequence of their singing, for his mercies endureth forever. And as they began to sing and to praise, there is a reaction. So notice, as we sing our song of praise to the Lord for who he is and what he is, when they praise Jehovah for who he is and what he is, when they praise him for what he has done, for his mercy endureth forever, there is a reaction. There is a consequences of singing praise and worship to the Lord. Notice in verse 22, as they began to sing this song and to praise the Lord, God did something on the behalf of the choir and the armies of Judah. The Lord reacted and sent ambushments or God released madness on the enemy. And sometimes all you need to do is sing unto the Lord and God will Break out against your enemies, I tell you. And notice what happened. God released madness or ambushments against the enemy, against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which came against Judah. Judah, as we mentioned in the previous lesson, Judah means praise. Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir were come against praise. And notice what happened. As they begin to sing and to praise, the enemies of praise were smitten. Struck out with madness. And notice what happened in verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood, on, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. And they utterly to slay and destroy them. So as a madness broke out, Judah hasn't even sh um, fired a shot. They're just singing unto the Lord in front of the army, singing for his mercies endureth forever and then madness broke out where the enemies turned on each other I tell you. the thing that shouldn't happen happened for his mercies endureth forever 
tell you, when you open your mouth to worship the Lord, when you open your mouth to praise the Lord, when you open your mouth to sing unto the Lord, things can happen that should not happen for you begin to happen for you. Why? Because he's good. For the Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever and as judah begins to sing this the edomites the inhabitants of mount seir are destroyed and then notice what happens miracles begin to break out because then the brother the brothers the nations that were brothers moab and ammon the descendants of lot and lot's daughters products of incest began to destroy each other tell you first they were allies in attempting to destroy judah first they were allies to destroy the nation of praise and yet as judah began to do what they were known to do to praise the lord the allies became enemies i tell you when you sing the things that's working against you can work for you if you would open up your mouth and sing. Why? For the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. And in verse 24, when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, so that supports you can sing in your nighttime. You can sing when you're going through a difficult and sticky situation you can sing unto the Lord in your wilderness experience they went to the watchtower in the wilderness they followed the instructions of the Lord set yourselves stand ye sit, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord they followed the instructions of God they followed God's strategies let me just back up when you fast and pray, the Lord will lead you and the Lord can guide you and he can give you direction on what you ought to do. He'll tell you where to go. He'll tell you when to stop. He'll tell you when to move. He'll tell you what position that you can take. And when you get the instructions, you can worship and praise the Lord. And then as they went into the wilderness, look, the very thing that they were afraid of. The very thing that God told them, stop being afraid about. The thing that God told them, don't be dismayed. Because God said, this battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And when God fights for, for you, notice the thing that you are afraid of will lay at your feet. <laughs> Look at verse 24. They looked unto the multitude. And their posture changed. The first posture, they're coming to invade. The second posture, as, as the, the nation of Judah worshipped and praised, notice what happened. They changed their posture. What was their posture, Brother Neil? They were dead, laid flat out on the floor. Notice, when you sing and praise the Lord right, God has the power to wipe out the thing that you're afraid of and take the life out of it. Take the fight out of it. Take the strength out of it. Oh my goodness. When you sing and praise the Lord your God. And notice they fall into the earth. And none escaped. None got away. And when Jehoshaphat, verse 25. And his people came to take away the spoil of them. Look what was laid at their feet. Not just corpses. The Bible says in verse 25, riches, precious jewels. And it, notice what happens when you worship right. God has the power to bless you. Not just with spiritual blessings, but with natural blessings. With resources. With wealth. And notice, it was more than enough. To the victor goes the spoils.
to the worshiper goes the spoils to the praisers go the spoils to those who know how to sing unto the Lord for his mercies endureth forever goes the spoils and they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away and notice it wasn't for a day not two days but three days in the gathering of the spoil it was so much you got three armies dead and then notice in verse 26 when they finished gathering up the victor spoils the wealth and the riches notice what they did they changed their posture again Look at verse 26. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. So notice, when their enemies were, de were defeated, they didn't forget God that delivered them. When they received the wealth transfer, they did not forget the Lord but then they changed their posture again and they assembled themselves in the valley of Bar Baraka so notice the nation assembled for prayer the nations assembled themselves for fasting the nation assembled themselves to hear thus saith the Lord the nation assembled themselves to sing praises unto the Lord for his mercies endure forever. And notice, the nation gathered to gather the victor spoils from their enemies. And then also the, the victors also assembled to praise the Lord some more in the valley of Baraka. And in the valley of Baraka, they blessed the Lord with their bodies they barack the God, the Lord which means to rock back and forth which means they congratulated the Lord we salute you because you are the Lord we salute you because you're good we salute you for your mercies endure forever we salute you for your promises we salute you for delivering us from the hands of the Moabites and the Am Ammonites and the inhabitants of Mount Seir we salute you and they bless the Lord then verse 27 and they changed their posture again then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy People who know how to sing praises unto the Lord can return again with joy. For the Lord, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And look at verse 28. Another posture of worship and praise. Before you, you hear them singing in the wilderness before the army. Now, another posture is to worship and praise the Lord with musical instruments. And we see here, we've learned from scriptures that you can worship the Lord, not just with singing, but if and when possible, to be accompanied with musical instruments. And notice what they used, the psaltery and the harp and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. So notice, they're coming back to worship the Lord, assembling in his house again. And we see here, they're being accompanied with musical instruments. And we're familiar, some of us are familiar with Psalms 150. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the timbrel and harp. Praise him with the, the psaltery and harp. Excuse me. 
praise him with the timbrel and dance praise him with stringed instruments stringed instruments and organs praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals praise him upon the high sounding cymbals let everything that have breath praise the lord praise ye the lord so you see it being put into action and as they worship the lord some more coming back into his house so notice after the lord blessed them gave them victory they assembled back into the house of the lord again so notice they, this generation did not forget the lord their god the nation of judah which means praise did not forget to praise and honor their god when the lord comes through for you remember god when he does the supernatural on your behalf don't forget God. When God blesses you immensely with, with wealth, wealth transfer, and natural resources, remember to assemble into his house and bless the name of the Lord your God. And in verse 29, the fear of God came upon all the kingdoms and the countries surrounding Judah because they had heard the report on the news how the Lord their God fought against the enemies of Israel and not only notice when you, pray, you know how to worship and praise the Lord right God will put the fear of God even on your enemies and in verse 30 he gives you grace he gives you mercy he gives you peace that comes from him and then notice he knows how to give you peace and he knows how to give you rest who would not want to serve a God like that who would not want to worship and praise a God like that with such power that an entire nation didn't have to fire off a shot my goodness don't you want to come to know this God today if you don't know him if you want to serve a God like this if you want to worship a God like this why don't you make him your God today through his son Jesus the Christ the son of the living God the one who died on the cross for the sins of humanity was buried but arose again on the third day and he's conquered sickness pain death hell fear and the grave don't you want to come into a relationship with him you can today just call upon his name like this dear lord jesus i confess that you are the christ the son of the living God. I confess you this day as my Lord. And I believe in my heart that you died for my sins, but arose again from among the dead. I ask this day that you forgive me of my sins. I now repent of my sins. I ask that you come into my heart and from this day forward, Lord Jesus, I ask that you be Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer and meant it, we want to welcome you into the family of God. For the Bible declares in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It also says in, in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 13 that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is also found in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And on the behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Beverly D. Frazier, and the Morning Star Church family in Yonkers, New York. We want to thank you for tuning in on another segment of worship 
with the proper understanding. The Lord bless you always. God bless.